In this video, we will use AI tools to create virtual environments for your film projects. We cover the full workflow from generating the 3D sets to filming your shot in a low-budget virtual production environment to compositing your shots with some AI tips and tricks, like for example, relighting your shot based on the generated environment. So grab your phone and dig out that old sci-fi short film script that you never got around to filming because you didn't have the budget or access to a studio and start telling your story. Before we dive into this AI-assisted virtual production workflow, let's quickly talk about what virtual production means. Virtual production is the use of digital technologies to allow filmmakers to visualize and manipulate computer-generated environments and characters in real time, giving them greater creative control and flexibility in the production process. The best example is probably Avatar, where they used a full digital set. They only built the rough geometry of the scene and everything, like for example the actor's performances, was transferred into a sort of game engine, allowing the director to shoot the movie pretty much like a traditional movie. Another example is The Mandalorian, where they display these virtual environments in real time on a giant LED wall. And not only does this help the actors to feel immersed in the world, it also helps to integrate the footage because the actual environments are lighting the scene. But I suspect that none of us have access to such a giant LED production studio, so instead I would like to recreate this effect using AI tools. So the first step is to generate a 360 degree AI image. And there are lots of ways to do this. Here are four. The easiest way to do this is probably to use Skybox Labs. Here you can generate such an image right in your browser. Select a style and write down your prompt and in a matter of seconds you will have a high resolution 360 degree image. NVIDIA Canvas allows you to paint nearly photorealistic environments using simple material brushes. You can also change the overall style of the image with just a simple click. And with the latest update, which you can download for free, you can now also create 360 degree images. If you want even more control, you can use ControlNet for stable diffusion. Just go to Text to Image, open ControlNet and use any 360 degree image as your reference image. Choose depth as preprocessor and the corresponding depth model and don't forget to enable tiling. Now you can start transforming your base image into anything you can imagine. Using Midjourney as your image generator is also possible. Just upload a 360 degree image, copy the URL, add it to your prompt, also set the aspect ratio to 2 to 1 and Midjourney will start generating a 360 degree image. But keep in mind that Midjourney's images are often not tiled, so you either need to clean them up in Photoshop or just film in the other direction. Also for the last two options you will want to use an AI image upscaler, because we're going to stretch the image over a full 360 degree field of view, so we need as much resolution as possible. If you know my other videos on this channel, you know that I love depth maps. With these black and white images, we can create 3D models from two-dimensional images by distorting the image based on the pixel values. This is how we created the 3D sets for the AI-generated short film, the one about the city on Mars, and the cinematic facial animation. Check out those videos and subscribe if you like these kinds of AI experiments. When I first saw that you can generate 360-degree images with AI, my first thought was, would the depth map technique work? Was the algorithm even trained on these kind of distorted images? But it quickly turned out that it works perfectly fine. Almost. One problem is that the depth maps generated with high resolution depth maps for stable diffusion, the add-on that we pretty much used for all the previous videos, that these images are not tiled and that means we would get these very ugly seams later in the 3D model. But there is a simple solution. Control net for stable diffusion. Because here you can activate a tileable option. Just import your image and set the aspect ratio to values that fit 2 to 1. Choose depth as your preprocessor and the corresponding depth model. And you can set denoising to zero. We don't actually care for the AI generated image. We just want the depth map that it would use to create it. You can see here that the depth maps created with this method are not as high quality, but they're tiled and that's more important for our purposes. 
But there is another problem. If we would generate a 3D model out of this depth map, we would have this thing, this strange distortion. And that occurs because a depth map works in such a way that everything with gray values above 50% is pulled towards us and everything below that is pushed away. So we have to shift the values in a program like Photoshop so that they are all between 50 and 0%. But this already creates the next problem. Because with 8-bit images, we only have 256 gray levels, meaning 256 distances that we can distort our image to. And if we now also shift half of these values between 50% and 0%, we have that number to 128. And this means that in the 3D model, these steps would be very visible. So make sure to save the image in a higher bit depth to avoid this problem. Now to prepare our three-dimensional scene, we first create a simple sphere in Blender. And then we add a new emission shader to it, to which we assign our AI 360 degree image. And if you want to work with new lights later that actually interact with the scene, use a principled BSDF instead. Then you go to modifiers and add a new subdivision surface modifier, cranking it up to the maximum. Then add a displacement modifier, where you will plug in your depth map, set the coordinates to UV and play around with the desired strength. To make it a bit smoother, you can also add another subdivision modifier after that. And there you have it, your set is ready. And if you take a look inside, you'll see that, especially compared to the previous techniques that we used on this channel, with this one we are very flexible with how we can move the camera around. There are two ways how you can film the scene. For the virtual production way, you will need an iPhone with the app CamTrack AR. And for the other one, you can use any camera that you like. Let's start with CamTrack AR. This app allows you to record video and 3D camera tracking data at the same time. So you don't need any preparation, no tracking markers, and you can just start filming. Set the scene with a ground plane and add some markers. And these will help you to orient yourself later on in the scene. If you have access to a green screen or a very large green cloth, you can even live key while shooting and import your 3D model into the app. This way, your camera operator can see how your final shot will be framed while filming. To do this, you will need to export your 3D model to the USDZ format. I first tried out a Blender plugin for that and even though I could then open the file in the iPhone's AR viewer, I couldn't get it into the app. Something was still wrong with the format. But luckily, there is an app for that. With Reality OBJ to USDZ Converter, you can convert an OBJ to USDZ on your iPhone or iPad. And now you can place your 3D model into CamTrack AR and start filming. If you don't have an iPhone or want to maybe use an actual professional camera, a little more planning is necessary. Make sure that you always have enough trackable points in the scene that stay there as long as possible. I will put a link to an amazing tutorial on motion tracking in Blender by Ian Hubert into the video description where he quickly explains everything that you need to know about this topic. And also, if you want to relight the footage later using the AI technique that I'm going to show you, make sure that the footage is as evenly lit as possible. For example, a cloudy sky would be perfect. Next, you need to free your actors from the clutches of the background. And if you shot on a green screen, you can just simply key them. And if you didn't have a green screen, try out the After Effects Roto Brush tool or the AI background remover by Runway ML. So when you tracked your footage in Blender, you are pretty much all set. You have your scene with a camera and you just need to change your background image for the camera to the keyed image sequence of only your actor. If you shot with CamTrack AR, then in the folder created for the shot by the app, you will also find the plugin used to import this camera data. Simply install it and then you can go to File, Import, Hit Film AR Tracking Data. Now you can import your 3D model, rotate it the right way, scale it to your liking, load your keyed image sequence into the camera background images and your scene is ready. But do you remember the virtual production example of The Mandalorian where the virtual set actually illuminates the footage? Let's try something like that with the power of AI. To achieve this effect, we first need to generate a normal map sequence for our footage. Instead of using luminance values to represent the distance from the camera like with a depth map, a normal map uses the red, green and blue channels of an image to represent the orientation of the surfaces. And such normal maps have been used for a very long time in video games and 3D animation to kind of fake more detail, to add more detail to an object without increasing the poly count. 
But how do we generate a normal map for our footage? Graham Niedermeyer has the answer for us. He has written an add-on for automatic 11.11 stable diffusion called High Resolution Normal Maps for Stable Diffusion Web UI. Be sure to also check out his YouTube channel, which I'll link below, because there you'll find, among other things, really impressive AI augmented reality experiments. The tool was originally created to generate normal maps for AI-generated images. But when we turn down the denoising strength all the way down, the add-on just uses the original image. And that means using the batch function we can just load in our image sequence and it gives us a sequence like this one. And as you can see, the tool was not really intended for video sequences and it flickers a lot. But we can use the same trick that Corridor Digital used for the AI enemy movie to deflicker the generated images. Just go to the Fusion tab in DaVinci Resolve and put a few deflicker nodes set to Fluorolight in a row. I have also added an optical flow node which detects the pixel movement of the image and I smooth it out using a repair frame node. I was also wondering if it makes a difference if we use the already keyed footage or the footage with the background still inside it to create the normal map. In this example it worked much better with the background. So I also tried whether using a sequence with an artificially inserted background, for example because you were shooting in front of green screen would make a difference, but the results were not convincing enough to justify the amount of work and enormous render times. Back to Blender. Here we first have to get the image sequence from inside the camera out into the scene as an image plane. And for this I'm going to use the add-on reference to image plane. Just download the zip file from GitHub and install it under preferences in the add-on tab. Now you should see a button image plane from visible refs in the background images settings of your camera. If you click on it, you can choose the distance to the camera and the shader type, use a principled BSDF here, and you will have your footage physically inside your 3D model. If you want to adjust the distance to the camera, you can do that here. Next you can insert the normal map. Open the normal map sequence in a file node and set it to non-color. And then plug it into a normal map node and into the normal slot in your principled BSDF. The imperfections of the normal map were still a bit too strong for me, so I built a small setup based on this tutorial with which you can flexibly blur the normal map. And next I want to finally relight the scene. So if you want to render in cycles, you can simply assign an emission shader to your 3D environment and play with the strength. The world will then serve as a light source for your image sequence. For a much faster EV workflow, you can create a sort of fake HDRI by loading your original 360 degree image into an environment texture and then use for example a curve node or a hue and saturation node. Also don't forget to align your fake HDRI image with the 3D model. So you can see our footage fits much better into the 3D model already, especially considering we had a completely different lighting setup while filming these shots. But it really starts to shine when we add our own custom lights into the scene. So in this shot for example I wanted to highlight the cyan and magenta neon lights of this Blade Runner like cyberpunk city even more. So I added two more point lights into the scene. And in this shot, I wanted to brighten up the left side of me because there would be a very strong bounce light coming from these rocks behind me. So I added another area light with a warm color to kind of fake this effect. And of course you can also add additional effects like depth of field in Blender. Just make sure that you set your transparency correctly in the shader for it to work. So now that these shots are pretty much done, we could render them out and call it a day, but I would recommend rendering the foreground and background separately, so we can do some additional compositing in Nuke Fusion or After Effects. If you shot with Camtrack AR, you can also import that camera data into After Effects as well. And in this shot, for example, I used it to add some additional dust stock footage into the scene. I know these shots aren't exactly Hollywood, but keep in mind that I originally shot them as a spontaneous test for this workflow idea. 
And you can see there are a lot of mistakes still in there. Like for example, you can see that the color temperature changes because I forgot to turn off the automatic adjustment in Camtrack AR. And also it's a bit shaky because Camtrack AR will disable the automatic camera stabilization from the iPhone. And to smooth out those micro wiggles, you could just use a warp stabilizer set to like a very low value of maybe 15% or something. In this shot I wanted to try out how far I could push this technique, so I tried this image with very overexposed sunlight. And there you can see quite well that it falls apart, you can see where the limitations of this technique are. Even though at some places it works surprisingly well. Just again, think about all the possibilities that this technique offers. From VR experiences to video games to creating your own virtual production studio in your living room. Another option of course would be to also put the green screen footage through an AI to create a fully AI generated short film. If this video has inspired you to try out any of the techniques for yourself, please send me a link or tag me on your work. I would love to see it. And please leave a like and subscribe and tell all your AI interested friends about this channel. These videos take hundreds of hours of work to create and growing this channel means I can focus more time on creating them. And now go out and shoot the movie that you always wanted to shoot. See you next time.